NASA says right now is an awesome, valuable chance to focus on the world. Venus, this follows the new exposure of conceivable life on the world. In the event that you somehow wound up investigating NASA's records from the 1960s, you'd see the Space Association calling Venus a planet of judgment. Meanwhile, Mars changed into our primary target. Such careful naming of the most significant planets isn't an occasion during the wild space race period. The Soviet Union was focused on sending expensive missions to Venus. The appalling planet showed fundamentally no opportunities for life, yet the Soviet space program didn't decommission the Venera program until the fall of the empire. Because of Neil deGrasse Tyson, we finally acknowledge why. Go along with us as we look at the declassified photographs from Venus taken by the Soviet Union. The fall of the Soviet Union was dynamic in more ways than one, not enduring the fact that it shifted the global direction of the world. The absence of the empire also sank various mysteries with it. The fact that the Soviets had a significant bias for secrets, from running the most remarkable information office on the planet to being secretive about their true capacity for extraterrestrial contact, implies the past superpower holds many hidden mysteries. Before the U.S. of America overwhelmed most planetary endeavors in space, the Soviet Union was leading the game. While the Empire has a long history of viable and unbeneficial space missions, its most prominent focus was on the extremely antagonistic planet Venus. In the Russian language, you'd see Venus as Venera, and consequently, the name of the mission that lasted from 1961 to 1983. During the same time, the U.S. was occupied with sending its missions to the moon. So, in a way, the Soviets chose to utilize their assets elsewhere. We can't say that the whole fixation with the second planet from our sun is odd. Did the Soviets hope to use the planet's surface as a reasonable and remarkable equipped power foundation? Or were they perhaps wanting to colonize the planet just after searching for any kinds of life up there? It's exceedingly hard to say why the empire was centered around the awful planet. Since the Soviets assigned these assessment journeys during the Cold War, they weren't entirely open about their places and targets. Believe it or not, all that we know about the Venusian missions depends on declassified and unarchived data. And still, after all that, it's difficult to pinpoint what the Soviets were searching for and if they uncovered the secrets of Venus. The Soviets didn't land on Venus once or even twice but multiple times. That is basically true. The Soviets launched 28 expensive rockets to the dazzling planet. Moreover, 13 of those entered the Venusian atmosphere, while 8 landed. Such complex missions had put the Soviets in a leading position in space exploration. Sure, the U.S. was a close second, but NASA was more keen on satellites and innovative technology than on looking for life on planets. Its attention on Mars came hence, neither particularly great nor particularly bad. Your history textbook may not tell you this, but the Soviet space program was the first to send a probe into the atmosphere of a planet other than Earth. It also had another set of firsts on its record. The USSR became the first state to achieve a soft landing on another planet, bringing back pictures and sounds from the surface of another planet. That's right, the Soviets had their own one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind moment well before the US. So why do we seldom hear about such accomplishments? Remember what we said about the Soviet penchant for maintaining secrets. That is only one of many reasons for the oversight of the Soviet space program. Back in 1992, the notable organization was decommissioned in the aftermath of the USSR, and the organization had to be reestablished with a new Russian identity, Roscosmos. A lot of its historical data was either lost or destroyed. This is precisely why we don't have a clear answer for why the Soviets launched 28 rockets into the Venusian atmosphere. At any rate, if we had to make the most accurate guess, maybe the Soviet decision to investigate Venus was about cost efficiency more than anything else. It isn't to say that the space program wasn't aware of the planet's potential. They were searching for practical water presence, levels of solar radiation, and the general characteristics of the planet. Without a series of these space missions, it would have been extremely difficult to evaluate Venus' high temperatures and thick atmosphere. Today, different cosmologists don't believe that the antagonistic planet could support life. The temperatures up there are high enough to melt lead, and water is scarce. Additionally, because of its thick atmosphere, the air pressure on Venus is typically 90 times that of Earth. Anyway, these are very recent developments, 
and to ignore the USSR's contribution to the assessment of Venus is akin to altering history. As far as the Soviets were concerned, Venus was worth investigating, even if it was primarily to fuel the space race. You see, looking at other more hospitable planets like Mars wasn't entirely off the table, but it was more expensive than sending probes to Venus. Everything basically comes down to the distance from Earth to another celestial body. On average, the antagonistic planet is only 40 million kilometers away from our home, while Mars is, on average, 250 million kilometers away. Such enormous differences in distance result in significant differences in cost. Also, if the United States of America wasn't the world's largest economy, it couldn't have ever been easy to explore Mars. Various reports suggest that Soviet missions were risky and had significant technical gaps. Clearly, the spacecraft weren't equipped to cover vast distances. Additionally, the organization had a poor history of losing contact with its rockets. So, it makes sense why the Soviet space program was choosing a more manageable and closer mission that would yield results. However, if we don't consider the space race in this context, the story of the Venera missions would be incomplete. The U.S. wasn't even on the space map when the Soviet program launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957. This move escalated the space race and maintained its momentum. Anyway, what's truly fascinating is the reason why the U.S. focused on the moon rather than Venus. NASA had a series of failures with its Venus missions during the 1960s, and as a result, the U.S. space agency ended up in a stalemate called the Venus Curse. Each time they launched a probe into the Venusian atmosphere, it ended up being disastrous. This was precisely when the Soviet Union saw an opportunity to capitalize on NASA's failures. At that time, both the U.S. and the USSR were determined to win the space race. The best strategy was to capitalize on two distinct opportunities. It was a quiet yet decisive strategy. The Soviet space program seized Earth's sister planet as the most significant achievement in the space race accomplishing something that its major rival had failed to do. Despite the empire's limited resources and mismanaged government, it repeatedly sent missions to Venus to secure its victorious position against the U.S. compared to NASA's focus on the moon. This strategic division wasn't without animosity. Also, deceptive propaganda was used to obscure their significant failures with Venus. The American government was prompted to criticize the USSR's obsession with the planet in the media. Venus was labeled as the terrible planet, while Mars became man's destiny. These labels didn't matter to the Soviets. Their mission was to demonstrate superiority over the Americans, and they were successful in doing so. The Venera missions are almost forgotten in modern history. However, despite their obsolete origins, those missions were fundamentally sophisticated, advanced, and ambitious. Indeed, at the start of the space age, the Venera missions would take the lead. Reflecting back to the 1950s, the Soviets began to experiment with the design and technical details of the probes. For the next 30 years, they continued to build and launch interplanetary spacecraft as part of the Venera program. Since the program was running alongside an extremely turbulent Cold War, the Soviets were focused on optimizing their resources. Fortunately for them, the early years of the conflict provided them with more resources than the United States. That benefit proved to be exceptionally valuable, allowing them to build larger rockets designed to endure high altitudes and significant distances. The Soviets rushed to experiment with both manned and unmanned spacecraft, while the Soviet academic community was working on a series of calculations and assessments to create accurate trajectories for the Venus missions. In the background, their Mars programs were also running effectively. For the Soviet space program, nothing was more important than developing sophisticated instrumentation for these probes. This led to the greatest breakthrough in the history of space exploration. In 1966, the Soviet organization launched Venera 3, making it the first artificial probe to enter the atmosphere of Venus and successfully impact the planet's surface. This landmark achievement intensified the competition between the two superpowers. Unlike the American missions, which were plagued with failures and gridlocks, the Soviet program continued to make progress. Despite the program's ongoing development, the USSR managed to send successful probes into the Venusian atmosphere. The main issue with this approach was limited design capacity. 
the Soviets quickly overcame their design issues and launched the most advanced rock of the Venera program during the 1970s. Their pioneering capability allowed them to conduct the first simultaneous launches of Venera 4 and Venera 5. According to most historians, this was the most fascinating decade in the history of space exploration. Indeed, the U.S. attempted to develop similar launch plans. So why did the Soviet office choose simultaneous launches into Venus? To understand this, you need to recognize that interplanetary travel requires advanced instrumentation to gather the highest level of data and evidence. Clearly, the spacecraft was initially launched to study the planet's surface. This is precisely what happened with Venera 4. Since the launch went smoothly and the spacecraft entered Venus' atmosphere successfully, the Soviet program proceeded with Venera 5. It wasn't just a repetition of the first launch. The second spacecraft was specifically designed to collect detailed information about the planet. Ultimately, the Soviets aimed to overcome the obstacles of temperature, atmospheric pressure, and radiation on Venus. They didn't have to wait too long for their answers. By the mid-1970s, the Soviet program was entering the most advanced period of the Venera missions. All that the USSR had done up to that point was about research and development. It was about ensuring that their designs and advancements were more sophisticated. It was also about perfecting the techniques and mechanics of interplanetary travel. However, for the second decade of Venera missions, the Soviet Union aimed to conduct exploratory missions. The most notable and exciting launch of this period was Venera 7. As the 11th Soviet probe entered Venus' atmosphere, it became the first spacecraft to send data from another planet. The planet's high temperatures, density, and surface pressures were already noted by this point. The Soviets were trying to record Venusian sounds. The next major achievement for the program came in the mid-1980s. Venera 13 had outperformed all previous interplanetary missions in terms of complexity. This spacecraft was the first to capture color panoramic photographs of Venus' surface. Simultaneously, the Soviet program launched Venera 14 to collect similar data about the planet's surface. As the Soviet Union was perhaps the earliest country to discover and recognize Venus, the Russian Space Agency has revived its ambitions for Venus missions. Venera is a forthcoming joint mission between Roscosmos and NASA to explore the atmosphere and surface of Venus. The contraction Venera represents Venus in Russian. It is expected to launch in the late 2020s or early 2030s and aims to study the planet's atmosphere, geological history, and search for signs of any current or past habitability. The spacecraft will include an orbiter, a lander, and possibly an inflatable to study the planet's atmosphere in detail. The legacy of the Venera missions extends far beyond their technical achievements and global implications. These missions, initiated by the Soviet Union during the height of the Cold War, represented a pinnacle of human imagination and determination in exploring the universe, despite facing numerous challenges and obstacles. The Soviets persevered in their mission to reveal the mysteries of Venus, a planet long believed to be hostile and inhospitable to life. One of the most crucial aspects of the Venera missions was their pioneering use of mechanical probes to study planetary environments and surfaces. These missions paved the way for future exploration beyond Earth's domain and laid the groundwork for our understanding of planetary science. The data gathered by the Venera spacecraft provided valuable insights into Venus' extreme climate, including its searing temperatures, crushing atmospheric pressure, and toxic air dominated by carbon dioxide. Additionally, the technological advancements achieved through the Venera program had broader implications for space exploration, including the development of robust heat-resistant materials, reliable communication systems, and dependable landing techniques. These achievements contributed to subsequent missions to other planets like Mars and beyond. The lessons learned from the Venera missions continue to inform spacecraft design and operational strategies in contemporary space exploration efforts. Beyond their scientific and technological significance, the Venera missions also had notable social and political implications during the space race era. These missions symbolized the competition between superpowers for dominance in space exploration. For the Soviet Union, succeeding in the Venera missions was not only about scientific discovery but also about demonstrating technological prowess and ideological superiority over the U.S. The global community closely observed each Venera mission 
recognizing their importance in expanding humanity's understanding of the solar system. The successful soft landing of Venera 7 on Venus in 1970 marked a major milestone as the first spacecraft to transmit data from another planet's surface. This achievement highlighted the Soviet Union's ability to overcome the immense challenges posed by Venus' harsh conditions. In addition to scientific instruments, the Venera spacecraft carried cameras that captured the first close-up images of Venus' surface. These images revealed a rugged landscape dominated by rocky plains and volcanic features, providing researchers with crucial geological insights into the planet's history and development. The panoramic photographs taken by later missions, such as Venera 13 and 14, further enhanced our understanding of Venus' surface morphology and composition. Despite their successes, the Venera missions also faced their share of failures and challenges. Some missions either failed to reach Venus or experienced technical malfunctions that prevented them from transmitting data back to Earth. The difficulties of operating in Venus' harsh climate, including temperatures exceeding 450 degrees Celsius, 842 degrees Fahrenheit, and corrosive sulfuric acid clouds, presented significant engineering challenges for spacecraft design and operation. Nonetheless, the determination and dedication of Soviet scientists and engineers involved in the Venera program paved the way for future missions to Venus and other celestial bodies. The legacy of the Venera missions continues in the ongoing exploration of Venus by space agencies worldwide, including NASA's forthcoming Viti mission in collaboration with Roscosmos. Looking ahead, the Viti mission aims to build upon the achievements of its predecessors by deploying advanced instruments to study Venus' atmosphere, surface topography, and potential signs of past or present habitability. The mission represents a collaborative effort to unravel the remaining mysteries of Earth's nearest planetary neighbor and to expand our understanding of the conditions that could support life beyond our own planet.